Oh, this is going to be a fun one here today, Akila. We're going to talk about the top four spices in your life, how you can use them to help you incorporate it and lower the inflammation in your body. Mm. I mean, it's stuff that you guys already got in your home. And these four spices... Or if you don't have it, it's easy to get. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. And when we come back, we're going to tell you what those top four spices are and... We're going to tell you how to use them, too. We'll be right back. Hey, Brown Beauties. Welcome to Living Inflammation Free with me, Andretta Robinson, your functional nutrition health coach. And I'm Akila Harvey. We are your mother-daughter hosts, bringing two different generations together bi-weekly to give you easy, actionable steps to help rid your body of chronic inflammation. Well, Akila... We're going to talk about the top four spices. Do you know? Let's do a drum roll. Can we do a drum roll? No. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da <laughs> no, no, no. No, that's no, no, not my drum no, no. roll. Okay. All right. Let's start with number one. <laughs> Can you guess what the top number one spice to help you get rid of inflammation is? And by you've probably been hearing about it, but we're going to tell, we're going to break it down to you today. Keela, what is it? Turmeric. Turmeric. <laughs> Yeah. Is that my Oprah voice? Yes. The whole thing is Oprah. <laughs> you get a turmeric. You yeah. get a turmeric. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What exactly is turmeric? So turmeric is a perennial uh, plant. A perennial, excuse me. Plant. Perennial. Perennial. perennial mm -hmm. Excuse me. Perennial, perennial plant that belongs to the ginger family, right? So it's a commonly used spice um, and a coloring agent in like India, Middle Eastern, Southeast Asian cooking. Yes, and let's break it right there. Did you know, have you ever, if you've gone to, have you gone to one of those restaurants, uh, one of the Middle Eastern restaurants, and have you noticed a lot of their food is yellow? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know that it was because of the spice itself, turmeric. Because if you ever look at turmeric, it so turmeric looks like have you if you've ever seen a ginger plant, they look almost the same. The only it's difference is exactly it's like an orange yellow. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is, and you find it now, it's like dried into like a fine powder. Mm -hmm. And you take that and you can use it in your dishes. And it has a and if you taste it by itself, it has like a really it tastes kind of bitter. It's got a warm kind of bitter taste, but it's used in curries and soups and sauces. But what makes turmeric work and be anti-inflammatory is an ingredient, a compound that's in it called curcumin. I'm going to say this right. Cur <laughs> curcumin. Curcumin. <laughs> it's curcumin. Yes. Okay. And it works by blocking the activity of certain enzymes in your body that promote inflammation. Let me tell you something. So, you know, I'm a woman of a certain age. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's all I got to say. And I started noticing when I would wake up in the morning, I would always have these aches and pains. And I go, where this come from? Man, where I'm did... having that now. I'm like, what is this? And you I'm know? only 36. And I'm one of those people that spring out of bed. I don't, I don't, I'm not a person that get up very slowly out of bed. I spring Ooh, out of bed, okay? Man, I about that, Andrea. I do, I do, I do. Mm -hmm. You need to ask me. As of late. I know. know. Well, that's what I'm trying, trying to tell you. So I noticed <laughs> that I was, you know, getting out of bed a little slower, and I was like, okay, this ain't working for me. So what I did was I started taking turmeric in a pill form. Mm -hmm. I take mine in a little small pill form, take two of them a day, now, I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't work overnight. This is not an aspirin. Right. This is not. Y'all out there, don't be running around out there. Say that one more time. Okay. Because people tend to think <laughs> it's supposed to work right away. It is not an aspirin. It does take time because it's natural for it to actually get into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So for me, I started noticing a difference after a really a real difference after three months. I did notice a difference after a few weeks, but after a few months, it just totally went away. I mean, my pain went away, and and I know it's the turmeric. Now, uh, before we get into other ways in which you can consume turmeric, um, when it comes to the pill form, do you have recommendations or what people should look out for as, as far as the type? Because there's so many different turmeric pills out there, and they're all not made the same. And that's a good question because turmeric is cheap, y'all. So if y'all out there, let me tell you something, it's really cheap. If yeah, you, it's not expensive. If you look at it in the store and if you see it for real, you'd be like, 
oh my God, I must be overpaying because the first time that I got some turmeric pills, they were extremely high. And I, when I, then when I saw it loose, I was like, wait a minute. Turmeric is like, shouldn't cost you, a, a pill should be no more than two cents, if that. It's really, really inexpensive, okay? So, but you know, you got these fancy people out there that's taking turmeric and making it sound like it's, uh, you know, more than what, more than what, what it actually is. Else, yeah. yeah, and where, in, in, in effect, it's just a little, and they say it's better in powder form, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. The powder form actually gets into the bloodstream a lot faster. Now, of course, a little black pepper, and you probably have heard this, a little black pepper activates turmeric to get into the bloodstream faster. Okay, so you may find companies that are promoting turmeric with a little black pepper in it. But again, black pepper is not that expensive either. So don't overpay. Don't overpay. That's my point. And they'll they charge they're charging you for the fancy packaging Please. and all of that. When turmeric is turmeric is turmeric. Black is, pepper is black pepper is yes. black pepper. But you can also use it on your food. You don't by the way, it don't take much turmeric. People won't ask me a lot how much. A half a teaspoon. That's all you need per day. Okay, a half a teaspoon. And you can put that in your curry dishes. You can sprinkle it over your rice. Roasted I'm, vegetables. Uh, yeah, you can put it in smoothies. I like to make golden milk at night. That's another thing, by the way. We talked about sleeping on oh, another episode. Oh, you took the words right out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Golden milk will have you over here dozing. Yeah, <laughs> especially if you mix it with a little almond milk and a little honey and a few mm -hmm. other spices. And they sell golden milk. Uh, golden milk pow the pa in a powder mm -hmm. uh, at Whole Foods, health food stores and Whole Foods. And when you hear golden milk, it's really just a, a powder of turmeric and yep. black pepper and yep. cinnamon and whatever else they put in it. Right. And you add your milk source. Yes, exactly. And then you can also put it in your salad dressings, you know, because, again, it's a lot of ways, and it gives it a little burst of flavor. So it's a lot of ways to incorporate turmeric. So turmeric is one of those things, if you're not doing it every day, find a way to incorporate turmeric in your life because mm -hmm. it is anti-inflammatory. It is the number one anti-inflammatory spice out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, before we move on, turmeric can stain any and everything. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so you need to be careful. Ask me how I know. I have ruined so many good things that I did not want to ruin because I just underestimated the power of that that uh, orange, yellow, yellow orange color. Yeah. Uh, so just be careful if you want to wear gloves because it can even stain your fingers and then you walk yep. around here with yellow tips. It takes a long time for yeah, it go away too. It does. So just be mindful of that. All right. So much for that. So that's our number one. And number two is turmeric's cousin. <laughs> turmeric has a cousin. The cousin is called ginger. Mm -hmm. Yes, ginger, you guys. Number two. So think about it. They both look alike. If you've ever been into a Whole food store in the little bins, you'll see uh, the actual turmeric, the root of the turmeric. And then you'll down a little further, you may see the root of the ginger. They look identical. They're in the they, same family. They're in the same family. So... So the root is used again. And I, I, I love ginger. Now, ginger has a better taste to it to me than turmeric. It's a little spicy. Yeah. You know. It's warm, spicy. Yeah. Kind of sweet, depending. And you can do it. And there's another thing I just found out. Ginger is actually more effective in the dried, powdered form. Ginger? Yes. Hmm. I, I did not know that. I'm actually fake allergic to ginger, believe it or not. Are you really? That's what the allergy test said. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know, Sway. Well, ginger is used for its medicinal I love properties. Ginger. I mean, I mean, the soothsayers were using ginger and turmeric back in the day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, ginger has been studied a lot for its anti inflammatory. It's an antioxidant. It also is anti nausea, nausea properties. Like, so if you feel like, you know, you're about to throw up or anything like that, or you having stomach issues, ginger will cure that bad boy. Mm -hmm. Now, and it's been used in a lot of different ways, especially as a seasoning. I use mine. I usually throw uh, uh, in my smoothie, I'll throw a little knob of ginger in my smoothie. But now that I found out about dried ginger, I've been using dried ginger because I can hold dried ginger. You know, look, you don't have to clean it. Because the thing about it, when you buy ginger and turmeric, you look at it and say, is it clean? Yeah. You know, because... Yeah, that's true. Because, <laughs> you know, it's out there loose. That's true. And you get home, and I be looking at it going, now, yeah. how do I clean this? Thing this thing been everywhere. Yeah, how do I clean this? Because, you know, typically, you're supposed to leave the skin on. You mm -hmm. don't have to take this... I used, 
I didn't know that. In the beginning, I used to peel off the skin. Oh, no. And the skin peeling off was so tedious, I stopped using it. Mm -hmm. And then I found out, oh, no, you're supposed to leave the skin on. You just got to soak the whole thing in vinegar or whatever. Well, I just use a little salt water or I take a little vinegar and some baking soda and just soak it for a minute. But here's the other thing I found out about ginger. In the, in the raw form and turmeric, you only clean what you use. If you try to clean the whole thing before you use it, it will dry up yeah, on you. Very true. So you have to only clean the little piece. So that was another thing. I was like, well, shoot, I'm just going to give me some powder and call it a day. Cause <laughs> I, I have slip. a peach ginger smoothie. Mm -hmm. Honey. Well, share the it's recipe, so good. please. Actually, shout out to Chef Aki because I got it from her. Okay. Um, but it is a delicious smoothie. I'll uh -huh. share it. Well, can you please share it? Sure. Okay, so it's often used to... I use ginger in my stir fries. I just started doing that. It's really good. And I I love me some gingerbread cookies. I used to... I do too. Ooh. I used to hate them growing up, and then Ooh. I ended up starting liking them as I got older. I love me some ginger. I can eat the whole box. That's just thinking yes, about you it. Can. So anyway, <laughs> but you can also, you know, make a ginger tea like Keela just said, you know, but it's just good for... It's a natural remedy. So, again, that is a super spice. Ginger is a super spice and anti-inflammatory. It also helps you with cold symptoms. You got a cold? Yes. Take your little ginger. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's number go three. to number three. Number three is cinnamon. Uh -huh. <clears throat> now, you know, there's many types of uh, different types of cinnamon. Uh, but I did not know that either, Kira. Yeah. I used to think cinnamon was cinnamon. No, no, no. Because, you know, because we used to buy, you know, you know, we buy it in the hood store. In the yeah, hood store. you buy the old regular, <laughs> you know, dollar store we, cinnamon. We didn't know that you had yeah. different types of cinnamon. Yeah, and, 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 it, and it all does not taste the same. Um, and so cinnamon is very anti-inflammatory, um, and it's due to its high level of antioxidants in it. Every type of cinnamon has antioxidants in it. So no matter what you get, as long as it's cinnamon, you're going to be getting the properties that you need. Um, antioxidants are compounds that can neutralize harmful free radicals that are in your body, and that contributes to inflammation and damage to your cells and your tissues and just no bueno stuff. Um, cinnamon, I remember, and this is, you probably don't know nothing, anything about this, but years ago, maybe at this point, eight to ten years ago, there was this thing called the Cinnamon Challenge. Have you ever heard of no. it? No. So... Uh, young kids, shout out to you Gen Zers. Um, some of you millennials <laughs> did it too. I okay. ain't gonna name no names. Okay. But basically you would take ginger and it's powder form in a teaspoon or a tablespoon and mm -hmm. you would just eat it. Uh, just eat it? Just take the powder and just dump it in your mouth. Why? Because boredom, because <laughs> Why stupidity. were they doing that? <laughs> but listen, exactly. But but really what, why it caught on was because the reactions that people would create because you can't swallow powdered cinnamon. cinnamon. So people would start gagging, throwing up cinnamon all over say. the place. Yeah. You know, it's spicy, so yeah. they'll be burning it. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like eating a spicy chip. I can't even put cinnamon. I used to, Listen. I take a little cinnamon and put it on my toothbrush uh, because, and I do that, I used to. I started burning the size yes. of my mouth. Yes. So I cannot, dumb. I cannot imagine It made someone... for a good video, but it just <laughs> absolutely not. But I say that to say, you don't need a lot of cinnamon in order to get oh, again, the properties a half a teaspoon, that it has. A half a teaspoon. And, and let me tell you something else. Cinnamon is great for people with high blood pressure. Yes. Diabetes. Mm -hmm. Those two things right there with the some... sugar. Oh, my God. I'm yeah. telling you. And I mean... Arthritis. Yes. It's because it's anti-inflammatory. So, so again, <clears throat> you got to find a way to get cinnamon in your life. Um, if you make smoothies, just put uh, a couple shakes of powdered cinnamon, cinnamon in there. Especially if you don't like the taste of cinnamon, you don't need a lot, like we said. So just a couple shakes, and it won't overpower the smoothie. Yeah. Too much more, and then now you got a cinnamon tasting smoothie. Okay, now let me just break it down. Y'all know y'all, y'all know y'all putting cinnamon on them yams. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yes. So, you know, cinnamon True. is great they on them. They even got cinnamon pills. I mean, cinnamon on them yams, So That's how we was getting it. We yeah, didn't know. Now, you it's also probably get that, all that daggone brown and white sugar. sugar too. <laughs> it's defeating the yeah, purpose. Exactly. But, you know, that's what we do with cinnamon. But, yeah, there are different types of cinnamon. So when you get out there and you start There's exploring Chinese it, cinnamon. you'd be surprised. I was yeah. shocked at the number of types of cinnamon there was. Uh, do not use, um, what's the brand that's, that we talked about, the little cheap brand of cinnamon? The dollar, yeah, the dollar uh, store? It's not one? the dollar store. It's, it's, I forget it's a name. 
um, it's a real basic cinnamon. You kind of want to step your cinnamon game up because not not all cinnamons are made the same, but they all carry kind of the same properties. But if you can get a more quality cinnamon, you can kind of get to those um, results faster than if you just do like a cheaper brand of cinnamon. That's just my two cents. Okay. Yeah. Now, the last one is just one that <laughs> I think we all can relate to this one. But again, you got it in your kitchen. Yes. But did you know how effective it was? Most people don't. It's they just know it tastes good. What is it, Keela? Garlic. Garlic. It's yes. garlic. Garlic ain't no joke. No. Okay. Let me tell you something before we get into the nitty-gritty of it. I was told that if you, so let's say you have a heart condition or you have anything heart-related, burn, uh, congestive arteries, whatever. Now, I'm not a doctor. Let me just put that out there right now. I, do not sue me. But I was told by... Um, uh, a health guru, that if you really wanted to, like, change your heart health, you eat garlic whole. Oh, yeah, I know not somebody. Not roasted, I, not none of that. I know somebody that does that, Take actually. it off, the, take out, peel it out, pop it, and eat, like, at least five to six cloves to start chewing on that bad boy. Kayla. And it will start to clear the plaque Kayla. out of your arteries. And it'll also clear the room. Honey. Because when, <laughs> <laughs> people smell it's you coming. It's going to clear you because okay. it's not easy I, to eat like I, that. I know this lady, she will be dressed to the nines. Smelling like garlic. And she walk up to you. Before she could even get up to you close, you'd be like, Oof. y'all smell garlic? Do y'all smell Ooh, that? I can't do it. And come to it. find out, you know, and she would just sit they're all innocent. And, and you know, yeah, because you're trying, to figure, you're trying to figure out where is this coming from? Yeah. And, you know, because nobody was eating. But I will say this. And she said it cured her heart well, disease. Let me, and let me tell you, <laughs> if you have heart disease, yeah. research it. And if you decide to do it, who cares about it if you smell like garlic? You want to live or you want to uh, uh, well, uh, not? You know well, what I mean? Well, like, here's the other thing about garlic. What makes it. garlic so work so well? It has this compound in it called allicin. And this, it has all these inflammatory properties in it, and it's high in antioxidants. So also, garlic is good for oxidative stress on the body. So, and I think oxidative stress is one of the reasons that a lot of people have the issues that they have. People don't realize how stress, and oxidative stress works on your blood vessels, in case you want to know what oxidative stress is. So uh, you want to reduce the oxidative stress in your body, and garlic is really, really good for that. Yeah. So what we're going to do today is going to... Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. And if you're cooking with garlic, don't overcook your garlic. Yes, yes, yes. Because what you do is you it's take no, out all, all the nutrients. The nutrients yeah. And actually you're starting to become it becomes rancid in the pan um if you overcook it. There is an art to cooking garlic. So a lot of times and I see we do this a lot so you know I know I went to culinary school. Yes. So I know a couple things. <laughs> a lot of times people will put garlic straight into the pan mm-hmm. with some oil mm-hmm. and then they put everything else in and then the garlic has burned. Mm-hmm. You needed to do it the garlic. opposite Glass. Way. Mm. If you're going to be so- sweating out onions and all that, put onions in there first, then put garlic. Glass. You only need to sweat garlic for maybe a minute, mm-hmm. two at the very most. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's if you're not trying to do any kind of roasting type of situation, and then put all your other ingredients. Or put the garlic in last mm-hmm. and let that do what it does. You don't necessarily need to be burning your garlic to get the flavor. So I just want to put that out there. Stop burning your garlic. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Now, you know, I told you, I think I said this was on another episode. I take my garlic now and I put it in my neutral, uh, my, my uh, Vitamix. And I add, a, so I cut it up real fine, put it in my the garlic. Vi- the garlic. Listen to me very carefully. I cut my garlic up. I add just a little bit of water to it, you know, so because I'm putting it and blending it. Then I take it and I put it in a small ice cube tray and I freeze it. For what? For any time I want to cook and use garlic. Oh, you're making a, um, I see what so you're doing. So I'm making a garlic pate or whatever you want to uh, call it. I forget it. the name. And but... I'm freezing it in my little ice cube thing. And then all I do is just pop out when I want to use garlic in my soups and stuff like that. I just pop out a couple of them. and throw... Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Instead of water, you should do oil. Why? Because water waters it down. I'm trying to cut back on oil. Oh. So, <laughs> so and you should put other herbs if you're gonna do all that, like well, rosemary. Well, like, now you're getting fancy. I'm just saying she's getting fancy with I'm it now. Saying. 
So, but anyway, the, that's how I use garlic because I want to put, I use garlic for everything. I put garlic in everything, just so y'all know. I love me some garlic. Oh, and do you have a preference on buying fresh garlic versus container garlic that's already cut and so, chopped and so, done after that? So here... So here's my take on garlic. You know there are garlic thieves out there. You know that garlic thieves. Yes, you say? yes. What are, does that mean? In other words, they smuggle garlic into our country, <laughs> <laughs> just like I they can't. do. They do. And some of the garlic that's on the shelf is not real garlic. I swear. What? And, you know, and let me tell you how you can tell. Smell it. If you can't not smell that garlic, you got a fake garlic. Wait a minute. So there's fake garlic. There I is didn't fake notice. garlic. Okay. Just like olive oil is fake. Yeah. Garlic is fake. That. So if you if you cannot smell that garlic, really? it is not real garlic. So what is it? I don't know. Some that they grew probably a hybrid. A wow. hybrid. I didn't know oh, that. Oh, absolutely. And so what I do now, even with my spices, when I buy a garlic spices, I Open well. Here you go doing stuff you ain't got no business doing. I get mine. She be in the grocery store opening no, 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 up no, no, people's no, no. cans. No, 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 no. I got mine from Thrive Market. Thrive mm-hmm. Market. You get mine from Thrive, Thrive Market. Market is gonna send it to you in a pouch. <laughs> and time you open that pouch, that garlic aroma just takes over because you know it's real garlic. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. You know, if you open it up and you don't smell no garlic, yeah, that's I a got, problem. I got to tell you, you ain't got that. no garlic. I'm I was today tell. years old when I found this out. Okay. <laughs> so today, other thing, we're gonna wrap this up. We're giving you two ways to use all four spices. Okay. Two recipes. Two recipes. We got a spiced lentil soup recipe uh, that we will have on our website that you'll be able to download. And it uses all four of the spices that we just talked about, along with some lentils. And you're going to get some vegetable broth and crush up some tomatoes. Yeah, Ooh. you're going to put the garlic and the ginger and the turmeric in it. It's going like to be good. Soup. Okay. And you also have an anti-inflammatory spiced smoothie recipe. Yes. Now listen, yes. it's not a sexy name. But it tastes good and yeah. it gets it gets the job done. Yeah. And it includes pineapples and almond milk or any kind of non-dairy milk mm-hmm. and a banana. Mm-hmm. Get yourself some t- uh, ginger, turmeric, cinnamon. Mm-hmm. And if you want to get fancy with it, put, put, a, put a clove of garlic in there. Mm-hmm. Now, listen, if you're like <laughs> me, you're like, I don't know about that because I'm just kind of like, I don't know. If you don't go overboard with the garlic and you add honey or as a sweetener, you won't really taste the garlic. And then, and then eventually, you'll be like, okay, I want the properties, and you'll just put the garlic in it. So if you have to work your way into putting garlic in your smoothies, because I understand that, <laughs> that's okay. It's well, fine. You're still getting all your other ingredients, you know, all your other spices. But at some point, just go ahead and put a little knob of garlic in there and see what happens. So let me tell you a quick story. My husband asked me for a smoothie. I said, oh, you want a smoothie? I didn't even know he knew what smoothies were. He see me make one I every day. He didn't know what smoothies were. I was just playing. Were. But anyway, he wanted a smoothie. So I said, let me test this smoothie recipe out. So I used this one on him just yesterday, actually. And with I put the garlic? And with the garlic. He drank that thing so fast, I, I don't even remember. I said, did you? T-? I mean, it went. And next thing I know, he was putting it over in his sink. And I was like, he said, it was good. Now, he added strawberries to his, too. Mm. So you can play around with yeah, this a little bit, you know, with the sure. fruit. But uh, he drank that thing so fast, I don't even think he realized. I think he thought he was drinking... Uh, uh, it's just like a, a child. You got to hide the medicine yes, and the candy. Yes, yes, you know? so, yes. So that's how that goes. But that smoothie is packed with anti-inflammatory spices. It's, it's, it's going to give you fiber. It's going to give you your vitamins. Mm-hmm. And it makes a great nutritious breakfast. This is your breakfast. Instead of in the morning, reach for this smoothie instead of normal thing, you guys. Bacon you know, eggs, bacon, and pancakes. eggs, pancakes, and all that all stuff. All the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the stuff that's giving you inflammation. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so just try Try this uh, spiced anti-inflammatory smoothie. Again, we will have it on our website, and you will be in able the show notes. In the show notes. Well, we I think the show notes going to take you to the website. But anyway, you'll be able to download this and try it. Let us know how you like it. All right. Okay. Well, that wraps up today's episode. Please make sure to follow us everywhere. Brown Women Wellness on Instagram. Facebook. We have a new community that we are working on. Uh, Very soon we'll be releasing it to the public. It's been a labor of love. It's been taking us a little while, but we want to make sure that the community is beneficial to all that who want to join. Um, And so we want to give you a little bit more of a safer space than Facebook groups where we can kind of be ourselves, have our offerings there, and just have a 
fun, you know, com- literally a community full of women who are looking to do better about their health and their wellness. So follow us, Brown Women Wellness, everywhere you can find us. Email us if you have a question, if you want us to talk about something in particular. Info at brownwomenwellness.com. And we will see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Living Inflammation Free, sponsored by Brown Women Wellness. If you want to know more about us and our podcast, check us out over on our website at brownwomenwellness.com or livinginflammationfree.com. Join our Facebook group at Living Inflammation Free and coming soon, our Brown Women Wellness community group. And remember, we are not doctors and any information shared by us is not medical advice. Please always follow your doctor's advice. And don't forget to rate and review our podcast and let us know what you loved about this week's episode. And please subscribe to wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Don't forget to find us across all social platforms at Brown Women Wellness or at Living Inflammation Free. As always, show notes with links to what we talked about today in this week's episode will be in the description box. Talk.